Hi everybody, it's Mark the Family Woodworker. Hey, we haven't posted a video in a while, but there's a lot of stuff going on with me and my family right now, including both of my daughters who actually purchased new homes that will be moving in in the next couple weeks. So I've got some housewarming gifts to create, and this week we're going to do a really cool walnut slab table for my favorite oldest daughter, and she'll get that joke. So stick with us. Well, I found this really cool piece of walnut for 225 bucks, which is a lot for a slab, but then again, it is walnut. But it's got some problems like this crack from kiln drying, and of course, this nice branch butt crack. Oops. Yes, but. <gasps> no, not the crack slab. <laughs> so this particular branch offshoot has a really sharp edge to it. I'm going to need to do something with it. And there's also some chainsaw damage on the side near the sapwood that I'm going to have to fix somehow. On the opposite end, it's not too bad. There's a tiny little crack, but I'm going to trim around that. And this is where you have to find a local supplier for specialty hardwoods like this. My supplier is in Mason, Michigan, right in the middle of the state, where they've got some great walnut slabs, but you have to find some stuff that's local. So now it's a question of figuring out what to do. And I talked with my daughter about whether to cut off or keep this little finger that sticks out from the main part of the slab. And she kind of liked it, and I kind of liked it. It's a feature that's going to make this particular slab unique compared to pretty much anybody else that's got a walnut slab coffee table. So after marking some nice gradual curves with a compass, it's on to trimming. The next step is to remove the bark, and you can use something like an oyster shucker, which works pretty well, but it's just a lot of work to do by hand. The bark has to be removed because it just breaks off and flakes off whether you want it to or not. The draw knife actually worked really great in removing that excess bark, but I also need to cut out some of the damage from that chainsaw without removing too much of the sap layer. So there's still a pretty deep hole into this sapwood, so I'm going to fill it up with some blackened epoxy. And then when I sand it off, it'll all be smooth, and it'll be a little bit of a design feature. There was a smaller crack that I sealed up with some medium CA glue, and I'll have to put a couple of layers on this in order to fill that in completely. I love watching the CA glue crystallize. something occluding your ear. It's sawdust, just blow. So I actually had some damage on the surface of this particular slab. It was supposed to be kiln dried and commercially planed, but it needed some extra work to smooth down the surface. Boy, are my arms tired.
So let's take a quick break and maybe take the pressure off some new woodworkers out there. You don't need a lot of fancy tools like the electric planer to get this project done. An inexpensive jigsaw to help you round out the edges and also an inexpensive sander so that you can vary the grits and get a smooth surface on the top of the slab are all you're really gonna need for a project like this. It's not that expensive to get started. And then you pick some legs that look really cool and you're done. Let's see how we finish this slab. Now because I still had a significant crack on the one end of the slab, I'm gonna drill in some dowels on a pretty severe angle, pinning those two joints together and preventing it from cracking any further. Also on this butt crack piece, I'm gonna put a couple of dowels in here too. I don't think it's gonna separate or crack any further, but this is just extra support. And then after the dowels are glued in, I'm gonna cut them off flush, and this will be the bottom of the slab, so you'll never actually see this repair. Now I'm gonna tape up the bottom of the slab because this crack needs to be filled in with some more of that black epoxy on the top surface. And I'll put a little tape on both sides of the crack just to protect the walnut, although it's easy enough to sand off, but it'll be even easier to just pull the tape off. And this is just black mica powder, which helps to color the epoxy. And I'll have to pour it in slowly. I used a pin to kind of jam it down into the crack, wait a little bit longer, fill it up again until the entire crack is full. It is my belief that you never start a job you don't intend to finish. And so now with the tape removed, I only have a little bit of the epoxy above the surface, which is perfect. Nothing leaked through the bottom, which is even better. It sanded off really easily. In fact, varying the grits from 220 to 320 to get a nice smooth surface on the top of this table. and adding a little water to raise the grain. The color is beautiful. Now my daughter actually picked out these black steel hairpin legs from Amazon, and they look really cool with this table. I like the black steel feature of a number of these leg designs on a walnut table like this. There's always really cool designs in the wood grain when you get close to a branch or a stump. And ultimately, this was an extremely easy project for the amateur woodworker. You don't need very expensive tools to do a project like this. You just need to find a decent slab. It's gonna need to be sanded. You need to remove the bark. But look at the end result. Even with the damage from that chainsaw, that little black epoxy feature looks pretty cool. And with B.B. King and Lucille looking down upon my basement family room, I even like this coffee table for my house. But it was a pleasure doing this project for my daughter. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. We hope you like and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you for another video. Take care.